Hi, uh, Dr. Garima here, back again. And uh, we'll be discussing today another of the Australian SBQs for the Part 1 written exam. Uh, this is based on myocardial infarction and a bit on asthma. I think I've already shot a video on asthma and an SBQ question, uh, but today I'll be doing it about uh, another SBQ. Uh, one thing also I wanted to share was, see, off late I'm seeing a lot of new candidates coming in who are just recently past graduates or who are out of touch with their theory as a basic dental graduate and uh, have been practicing like for a couple of years and then want to give the Australian exam. Uh, I understand that uh, you have just finished your internship and uh, mostly from the private college students. No offense, but uh, I think the concept understanding is quite weak uh, because you are not able to grasp the difference between the words that are asked, you know. Uh, there is difference between adverse effects and toxic effects and overdose and just a side effect. You have to understand the question very carefully because ADC is not an MCQ based exam where just one option is right and the rest of them are thoroughly wrong. No, uh, sometimes all of the options are right and you have to see which is the best option right amongst them. So, for that, you have to know the nuances of the concept which is mentioned in the textbook. So, if you have just studied your dentistry uh, on specific questions to clear the exam uh, of your the bachelor's, uh, then you are going to find the ADC part 1 very tough, to be honest, because ADC part 1 is testing your understanding of the concept and the knowledge. Uh, because you are going to practice as a clinician and you are supposed to know a lot of things because a lot of systemic effects have interplay with the dental things and you should be able to handle emergencies if it happens in your office. So if you think you are weak and you are struggling with answering the questions or you find almost all of the options correct at all the times, or you don't know why a particular option is correct because you don't know the logical reasoning behind it, uh, I would suggest, please, uh, take a step back. Don't rush in. Go back and open your textbooks. Read more on it. And then come and solve it again because if you try to mug up these questions, it's not going to help you at all. So, anyways, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say through this. And uh, it, it in no way I'm trying to undermine your self-confidence or something. I'm being very realistic and telling you. And even for me, for that matter, when I had started studying, I did struggle with my prosto concepts a bit because I'm not practicing prosto in pediatric dentistry. So I went and I opened my textbook and I brushed up my concepts. There is no... Uh, uh, embarrassment or shame in going back to your own textbooks. Uh, as a dental student, um, I have not read each and every chapter. I had just focused on major chapters. But then as a postgraduate, I did study in thorough detail and that's why probably my concepts are so uh, better off, you know. Uh, but as a freshly passed out intern, I understand you may not have had the time to study all the concepts. So now is the time, make use of it and uh, there's no harm, you'll just become a better clinician even if you don't clear the exam. Like knowledge never goes waste and you'll be treating somebody in a better way. So yeah, that's about it and let's go back on solving the exam. Paper. So uh, the question here is an 80 year old obese patient, 80 octogenarian and obese patient with a medical history of asthma and hypertension. All right. He takes salvitamol puff for his asthma. It's a steroid puff. And a beta blocker antihypertensive. Okay. He has an appointment with you and he climbed the stairs to come to the clinic. Probably a clinic is on some first or second floor. After reaching the clinic, he says he can't be properly. He has no known of angina, no known history of angina or heart problems. Although he could barely finish a sentence in one breath, how will you act in the following situation? Okay, so the patient says, I never had any heart problem, but I have asked the man, I have hypertension. He is obese and he is 80 year old. 
even though there is not a history of heart tension all these things what he has makes him a good candidate for having a heart problem so you should think in that manner so he's like kind of struggling because he's unable to breathe uh, unable to say a sentence in one breath and he says he actually says that he can't breathe properly so he's struggling to breathe so maybe he got tired or maybe his heart is not pumping enough oxygen that is because of his age or the heart is having some problems that's why it's unable to pump the oxygen so multiple factors can come in now based on the symptoms you are going to see what is the problem and how we will treat it understood you suspect that the patient has myocardial infarction now what sign you will check so the question only has simplified that problem for you the question itself is saying that you have already decided that it's myocardial infarction so just to make sure that it is indeed myocardial infarction what is the first sign that i'm going to look for now to understand what the first sign that i'm supposed to look for i need to really understand what is myocardial infarction so i just found a cute small video of 2 minutes let me play it for you Myocardial infarction is a fancy word which basically means a heart attack. Myo refers to muscle, cardial refers to heart, infarction refers to tissue death. So a myocardial infarction or an MI is a condition where some of the heart muscle dies. Let's see how this happens. So the heart's main job is to pump blood around the body, but it needs to pump blood to itself via these coronary arteries. When there's a reduction in blood flow through these coronary arteries, this is termed coronary artery disease or ischemic heart disease. Now, the most common cause of ischemic heart disease is when a fatty fibrous plaque starts to build up. So let's zoom in here on this vessel to have a look. Here what you can see is within the vessel, the coronary artery, is this fatty fibrous plaque that starts to occlude the vessel. So less blood is able to pass through. This leads to a condition known as angina, which we covered in the last video. Angina is when the heart muscle is irritated. This is what causes the chest pain, but there is no muscle death. However, in myocardial infarction, what happens is the top of the plaque gets knocked off, exposing the contents. Platelets start to aggregate around the top of the plaque, which then leads to a clot or a thrombus, and this then stops blood getting past. So we have full occlusion, therefore no blood downstream. This is termed a myocardial infarction. Commonly, there are two types of MI. Number one, STEMI, and number two, end STEMI. In STEMI, there is a full thickness infarct, which means the whole muscle wall dies, whilst in end STEMI, it's a partial thickness infarct. As a result, if you looked at the heart with an ECG, which is basically looking at its electrical activity, what we see is an ST elevation. So we see the ST segment elevating, and this is why it's called an ST elevated or a STEMI, whilst in a non-STEMI, we see an ST depression, and this is why so I hope you have understand what a myocardial infarct is basically. So now the heart in addition for the, what is the mus what is the job of the heart? It's, it's to supply and pump the blood to all the other areas of the body. But the heart also has to supply blood to itself, right? So when the blood supply and heart is a muscle after all. So when the supply to that muscle itself stops, then the function of that muscle will also stop, correct? So uh, in the myocardial infarct, the, the walls of the muscle, basically one of the walls of the muscle or all of the walls of the muscles will stop receiving a blood supply because of whatever reason. And because the muscle is not having a blood supply, it will not contract and pump. And when it cannot pump, the blood is not going to go through other parts of the body. So what is the first thing will happen? Your complexion will change, will become pale because the blood supply is not coming. So the first sign that you will look for is pallor, right? Slurred speech, facial palsy can be followed next, various other symptoms down the line. But even a stroke can have these kind of symptoms. But pallor is the first thing that I'm going to look for. That's the first sign if I'm suspecting a myocardial infarct that has the blood supply. Is the blood supply stopping? And if it is, then the color would change and that's the pallor. So that would be my answer of choice. Now coming to 
while he sat on the chair not the dental chair he got a crushing pain on the left side of his chest while he holds the pain area with his hands what will be the management for this patient okay i think i went on responses i should go on the question so that you don't know the answer and you can think with me wait let me go to yeah here so uh okay so he's having pain and what would i do for his pain ibuprofen paracetamol and aspirin see brofen and paracetamol are pain killers you have to understand how can i reduce the cause of his pain and not just treat his pain now in that youtube video that we just saw what did we see that platelets had aggregated and formed a clot what does aspirin do it it reduces the formation of clot and it relieves pain so i'm going to treat something which will try to elevate the cause of it also what happens see when the blood is not being pumped it starts to then clump up and will start to clot if the blood is not getting pumped in the body wherever it is it will start to clot and you don't want that to happen so until a proper help arrives and some treatment can be given you just want the blood to stay thin by having some anti platelet activity because it's the platelets which which will first start getting stacked up on each other and start clotting so we have to give something which has anti platelet effect which can be aspirin with some other anti platelet drug like clopidogrel etc so uh, aspirin here becomes the right answer of choice he says he wants to vomit and you give him a vomit bag and what is the your immediate reaction now now he started vomiting and you see that he's having pallor and then he's having a myocardial in, in fact are you the right person to treat it no right you want to call an ambulance and transport this patient as fast as possible to a hospital setting where qualified personnel are there to treat him so the first thing you will do is call an ambulance you just call 000 so that is your immediate action and while it's not you who's going on the call you're going to ask for help you're going to ask your assistant to call while you are still attending to the patient now you do not use a defibrillator for this situation and why did you not use it here what is a defib defib is to start the electrical activity back in the heart if the patient is conscious why would you want to start something which has not stopped right so because he is a conscious patient you are not going to give him a defib not because his vitals are stable or something so he is conscious that means his heart is still beating it's not stopped if he collapses and then there is no pulse whatsoever then you try to give the defib to start the electrical activity in the heart you are also i think did i miss one question yeah here he starts coughing what will be your next step provide hemlich maneuver what is a hemlich maneuver it's something gets stuck then you go behind and you push on the ribs and whatever is stuck in the throat like just comes out uh, nothing is stuck in his throat so there is no hemlich maneuver start cpr when you start cpr what is cpr cardio pulmonary resuscitation it's when there is no heart activity and you want to pump the heart so that the blood supply continues and the oxygen supply goes or if the patient is conscious why would you do a cpr provide thrust between his shoulder blades again for what no assess the situation while he sits on the chair okay i i can choose this option ask him to take deep breaths he's already trying to so you are asking him to do that is not going to make any difference check the effectiveness of his coughing how and what would you do by checking the effectiveness of his coughing he's already coughing give oxygen now if i am confused i'll be confused between option d and g like i will assess what more is happening but if i see he is struggling to breathe and he says i can't breathe that means less of oxygen is going to be supplied so the best option that i can do is to give him oxygen because at least 100% oxygen whatever oxygen he is able to take with minimum effort at least 100% oxygen is being administered to him and oxygen you know is very necessary for functioning and brain requires the oxygen you don't want any further problems to happen because of lack of oxygen until the help arrives so i'm going to give him oxygen yeah
Now coming after that, if I'm already giving him oxygen and he is breathing in and the question is not mentioning that he has collapsed, I'm not going to give him a defib because he is conscious. What I want you to take away from this video is open the textbook, read more on the pathophysiology of the myocardial infarction. Understand what that is. Understand what are the first initial signs and symptoms. Not all the signs and symptoms, the first initial signs and symptoms. And what is the basic management you can do to maintain the patient in a favorable situation until the help arrives. So that is what I want you all to learn. Also, I remember there was one question which was asked in last exam. Uh, if, if you can't call the emergency number 000, then which is the other number that you call on to. So uh, I think let's just Google that up. And since I just remember that, let's just sort it out here itself. What is the emergency ambulance number of a 